Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another true crime case, and today's case is the disappearance of the Lyon sisters. This case was a complete cold case from 1975 all the way up until last year in 2017, and it's super interesting, so let's just get into it. On March 25th, 1975, Catherine Lyon, who was only 10, and Sheila Lyon, who was only 12, disappeared without a trace after they went on a trip to a shopping mall in Wheaton, Maryland which is in the DC area. Their parents were John Lyon and Mary Lyon, and they had one brother named Jay. This was a super high profile case. It was all over the news. Everyone was talking about it when it happened. So let's break down a timeline of the day that they disappeared. The two girls left their house around 11 or 12 in the morning, or you know, 11 a.m. or 12 noon. They lived only a half mile from this shopping mall, and they wanted to see this mall all decorated with its Easter exhibits and all of the Easter decorations since Easter was coming up soon. They also wanted to have lunch there at a restaurant at the mall called the Orange Bowl. At about 1 p.m. they were seen by a neighbor and they were talking to a quote unidentified man outside of this restaurant, the Orange Bowl. At around 2 p.m. their older brother Jay saw them eating pizza at the Orange Bowl and around 2.30 to 3 p.m. was when a friend noticed the two girls leaving an exit that was the closest exit to their root home so it seemed as if they were going home. Now, when they went out on this trip to the mall earlier in the day, their mom told them to be back at about 4 p.m. And they were really good about curfews like that. So when 4 p.m. rolled around, that's when their mom started to get worried. And she actually did not end up calling the police until 7 p.m., but that is when the investigation began. Once the police started to investigate, they were able to get a description of this unidentified man that the girls were seen talking to earlier. He was about six feet tall, 50 to 60 years old, carrying around a briefcase that had a microphone in it and he was seen having multiple kids speak into this microphone that day at the mall and apparently he had something written on an index card that he was asking all of these children to say into the microphone so he asked these two girls to recite whatever the message was. So that was when a composite sketch of this suspect was made. And over time, many false leads led the police absolutely nowhere. And no trace of the girls were ever found. Now let's fast forward almost 30 years later until 2014. There was a new lead leading to a man named Lloyd Welch. Now, why was he randomly a suspect out of nowhere? It was later, way after this initial investigation began, that a friend of these sisters saw a guy at the mall this day staring so uncomfortably and intensely at the two girls that this young girl who saw this happen and who knew the girls actually walked up to the dude and was like, what are you doing? Like, she literally walked up to him and confronted him. She was a super brave little girl. This man at the time was in his mid-teens to early 20s with long hair, acne, and scars on his face and he was dressed very shabbily. After that came out, the composite sketch was made for him and now once police look back, it matches a 1977 mugshot of Welch when he was much younger and his age fits perfectly with this description of being in his mid-teens to early 20s. But what's so strange is that this is such a different description compared to the description of the six foot tall, 50 to 60 year old man with the briefcase, which was who the police were looking after for so long. Interestingly enough, the day that the newspapers initially printed that they were looking for a 50 to 60 year old man, Lloyd Welch went out of his way to go back to the mall and report to a security guard that he saw a man that day, 50 to 60 years old, pushing two girls into his car and like forcing them in the vehicle. But in reality, as it was later discovered Welch himself was the abductor. So let's fast forward once again. In February 2014, all of this information came together and Lloyd Welch was named a person of interest in the case. In December 2014, Welch's cousin came forward with something very shocking. He said that in December 1975, and keep in mind these girls went missing in March 1975, Welch asked him to help him remove two very large, very heavy duffel bags from Welch's truck. And according to his cousin, each bag weighed about 60 to 70 pounds and smelled like, quote, death. And apparently both of these duffel bags were completely covered in red stains. 
months. Welch told his cousin to throw both of these bags into a fire and his cousin did so without knowing the contents of the bags. And back in 1975, Welch was only 18. So once again, that matches the description. And he had already been convicted of rapes in three other states. So he was obviously someone that was up to no good. In July, 2015, Welch was already in prison serving time for child molestation in Delaware and was finally served an indictment for the first degree murders of Catherine and Sheila Lyon. In September, 2017, Welch pleaded guilty to two counts of first degree murder for the killings of both sisters. Even though it took seemingly forever to get this guilty plea from Welch and to finally put this case to rest, I'm very thankful and glad for the family of Catherine and Sheila Lyon that this case did come to a close and we do know who abducted them and killed them. It's a heartbreaking case. Any case having to do with murder is heartbreaking, but when it comes to young people and children, it just becomes that much more upsetting. Let me know your thoughts about this case in the comments down below. That's all for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.